The SE30 is perhaps one of the most popular vintage Macs due to its small size, good performance, and solid expandability. But a lot of these machines aren't in the best of shape due to the ravages of time. Let's take a look at a new product that's poised to tackle a common problem. This is the SMC PDS-ROM from Koba of Karo's Mac Mods, who kindly sent it my way to check out. It's meant to solve a potential problem you might have with an SE30. Normally, the ROM in those machines comes in the form of a SIM that snaps into its own slot on the motherboard, but this one plugs into the PDS connector instead, and that's what makes it compelling. A common issue with many vintage Macs is what's known as a battery bomb, where an original clock or PRAM battery will leak catastrophically if left in the machine. This gets electrolyte all over the motherboard and other components, severely corroding them. If not dealt with immediately, this will inevitably cause considerable damage that can be difficult, if not impossible, to repair. On the SE30, this is especially problematic as the battery sits right next to the ROM slot. In Vintage Max, the ROM is a critical component and just one damaged PCB trace can keep the whole computer from booting. Even if you're able to save the motherboard from the effects of a leaky battery, the ROM itself or its slot may not escape unscathed. For a while now, modern replacement ROM sims have been available, including from Karo's Mac Mods, one of which I installed in my custom clear SE30. Not only do these serve as great replacements for a damaged original ROM, they include some additional functionality. For example, they make the SE30 what's known as 32-bit clean, which lets the machine address more than 8 megabytes of RAM without needing special software. And they can go even further, like adding a small ROM disk you can customize and boot from. There's just one problem with these modern parts. As manufacturing technology has advanced, PCBs are able to be made thinner. The original ROM measures in at 1.3 millimeters thick, while these modern ones are only 1.2. That may not seem like much, but it's enough to sometimes cause connection problems with the slot which was designed for the thicker PCBs. And unfortunately, PCB manufacturers aren't really able to make them in that original thickness anymore. Of course, there are workarounds. Some clever 3D printed clips can help, as can replacing the slot itself with a new one. But these have their own limitations, like how replacement slots are dwindling in supply, plus there's the fact that replacing one would be daunting unless you have a decent amount of soldering experience. And even if the ROM slot didn't get battery bombed and makes good contact, a lot of the ones that Apple used have plastic retaining latches, which tend to break. So you're back at square one again anyway. So with that long-winded explanation out of the way, the SMC PDS-ROM is meant to sidestep the whole problem by plugging into the machine's PDS connector instead. These tend to be much more durable and less susceptible to electrolyte damage. Installation is easy, just plug the card in, then attach the supplied lead. The other end clips to pin 27 of the glue chip using a spring-loaded connector. And that's it. If you have experience with other replacement ROM modules, you may recognize an inherent limitation here. Those modules contain flash chips so they can be reprogrammed using a tool like the ROM Mate, but that won't work with a PDS connector. The chips on the PDS ROM are socketed instead, which means you have flexibility when programming them. If you have a generic chip programmer like a TL-866, you can pop the chips in and write them directly. Otherwise, you can pick up an SMC ROM SIM, insert the chips, and write the whole thing using a ROM mate. All of the same software tools apply. Crucible lets you customize the startup icon and integrate a custom ROM disk, then generates the necessary files to flash. If you have a ROM mate, these can drop into the SIM programmer app, and off you go. And the PDS ROM offers 2 megabytes of capacity, which gives a decent amount of space for a ROM disk. 
Overall, I like this thing. Yes, it serves a niche purpose in an already niche hobby, but it does a great job solving a very real problem. What's more is that it's beginner friendly with no soldering necessary and includes a very capable ROM image already flashed to it, so it's plug and play. I think its price at under $40 US is quite compelling too. I found that the value of Caro's Mac Mods products is solid and the PDS ROM is no exception. Thanks again to Kay for sending along a PDS ROM for us to explore. Of course, I've included a link in the description. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Here's another episode you should check out. And as always, thanks for watching.